In this video, I'm gonna show you the most OCD way to wash a pristine black finish and keep it swirl and scratch free using the multiple wash mitt method. And that's just a method where instead of using one wash mitt, you're gonna use multiple wash mitts. And by doing this, you never cross contaminate dirt removed off one panel to the next panel. And that's the secret to maintaining a black finish or even a ceramic coated finish. Now, I want you to just follow me on this. What in, you, in the big picture, when you think about it, the way we touch our car the most is three ways. One, we wash it with a wash mitt. Two, we dry it with a drying towel. And then three, we use some sort of microfiber towel to do things like apply a spray detail or wipe off a polish. So we touch it in three different ways, wash mitts, drying towels, wiping towels. And the most important thing I could ever share with anybody as far as it goes with keeping a flawless black finish or any kind of finish is to first inspect anything that's gonna touch the paint with your eyes and tactically with your hands and make sure that there are no contaminants that you can see or feel. And if you discover any contaminants, any sharp pokey things, then you wanna either pick them out or you wanna discard that and don't let it touch the paint on your car. And here's why, it takes hours to buff at a car and it only takes seconds to put a scratch in because whatever you're using to touch the paint is contaminated. And most of the time when I travel around other people's detail shops, what I notice is their wash mitts are usually contaminated. They drop them on the ground, they get sticks, they get bugs, they get dry leaves and rocks in them. And then you take that and you wash the paint and then you wonder where the swirls and scratches come from. It's contaminated microfiber tools in most cases. So always inspect everything that's gonna touch the paint and have some protocols in place to help you keep these things clean. And I'll share that when we move outside as I show you how to wash this 1963 black Studebaker Avante. Now this has a flawless finish. How do I know? Cause I'm the guy that polished it out. And while I don't need to wash it, I'm going to use this as my demonstration, as my canvas to show you how to carefully Use the multiple wash mitt method to wash black paint or any car and keep that finish swirl and scratch free. So let's move this thing outside and get started. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna mix up your car wash solution. And what I recommend to people is fill the bucket mostly with water, like three or four gallons, then add your soap and then create the suds. If you put the soap in first and add the water, you're gonna have a bucket full of suds and no water to actually wash the car. Now, real quickly, just to show you, I'm using the Dr. Beasley's Ceramic Body Wash. Now, this is a pure soap. It's intended to clean a ceramic coated car, but you could use it on any type of finish. But the point is, is it doesn't leave anything behind. It doesn't leave carnauba, it doesn't leave any silicone, no graphene, no SI2, no glossing agents. It just cleans, leaves the paint and whatever you have on there pristine. So that's what you're looking for is a pure soap. Now, this is a grit guard insert. This is ingenious. I know the guy that invented it. His name is uh, Doug Lamb. And it has these two inch tall veins that hold this grill up off the bottom about two inches. And the idea being is if you're not gonna use the multiple wash mitt, so it doesn't really apply for us, but if you're just gonna use one wash mitt, as you wash a panel, this is at the bottom of the bucket. You don't just swish it around in the water. You actually bring it down here and rub it against the, this grit guard insert. And what that does is it makes sure that you loosen any dirt off the, the fibers so they drop down and then they're trapped by these veins from swirling around back up into your car wash solution. So even though I'm gonna use the multiple wash mitt method, I am gonna put a grit guard insert into my bucket. I always do. Okay, the next thing I wanna share, this is one of my secret techniques. This is just a clean bucket. And I want you to see that there's nothing in there because the most important thing when you're washing your car is after you've used a wash mitt is you wanna keep it from getting contaminated. So you don't want it to fall on the ground. You wanna set it down any place that could be dirty. So you want a clean bucket and again, another grit guard insert in there just to make sure any dirt that is in there is on the bottom. So you wanna keep it off your mitts. The whole idea is throughout the process to keep this clean, Keep your drying towel clean, keep it, keep it from becoming contaminated. Okay, so now that, now that you've got your soapy water all mixed up, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and rinse the car off. Now, I wanna show you my favorite sprayer here for a reason. Uh, this, you can buy this as an Orbit, you can buy it at Lowe's or, or uh, Home Depot, but I want it for the jet setting and I want it for the shower setting. Those are the two primary settings I want. So jets to blast things out of cracks and crevices and the shower is just for a nice gentle, uh, 
a pattern of water to rinse the car off thoroughly. Okay, so we will start with this. Again, I just polished this car, so it's really sad to have to wash it. And the goal here is not to um, clean a dirty car. The goal here is to show you how to wash a car without putting a scratch in it. So that's the goal. So if this is single stage paint, and it scratches very, very easily. In case you didn't know, the softest paint is single stage black paint. And the reason for that is because the, when you're working on single stage paint, you're working on two things. You're working on resin, that's the paint, and you're working on the pigment. That's what gives the paint its color. And the pigment for black paint is carbon black. A simple form of carbon black, if you got a barbecue, lift the hood up, not when it's hot, and scrape the inside of the hood, and that black soot that you bring out, that's carbon black, it's very black. So when you're working on single stage paint, you're working on the resin plus the pigment, which is carbon black. And carbon, carbon black is a very soft material. So what it does, I wanna get the back here real good too. So what that does is it makes the paint soft overall. And just the opposite, the hardest single stage paint is white paint because the pigment for that is titanium dioxide powder. And that makes the paint very hard. Now, when you're working on a clear coated car, there's no pigment. So now it's just the hardness of the resin itself. And that varies between manufacturers. And of course, as technology is introduced, sometimes you get softer paints, sometimes you get harder paints. What you really want is that paint that's right in the middle. Something that you can correct easy, but isn't gonna scratch easy. Okay, so now that I've got this thing washed, this is the technique. This is, this is a color-coded, this is called a chenille microfiber wash mitt. And I like to call these like alien caterpillars. They're about an inch and a quarter long. They got tiny little tufts of microfiber. So they don't have a deep nap, they got a very short nap. So it's harder to contaminate them. But what I like about this is when I put this in the wash machine, it's gonna jiggle around a lot and any dirt that's on there is gonna come off. Again, everything is about keeping this clean. So the next time you wash your car, it's not contaminated. Because as I said inside, if you got a pristine finish like this car, and th then over time you see swirls and scratches, how did they get there? They get there by the way we touch it. We touch it with wash mitts, we touch it with drying towels, and then anytime we're wiping something, like wiping a spray detail or a polish residue, our microfiber wiping towels. Those are the three things we touch the paint on our cars. And if you can keep everything here clean using some of the techniques I'm sharing, you can increase the chance that you don't put any swirls or scratches in, when you wash your car. And if you think about it, that's the thing we do the most to our cars. Like I don't really know anybody nowadays that changes their oil. They take it to the dealership to get the spark plugs changed. The only thing that's left for us to do is wash the car. So that's the thing we do the most. That's how we touch it the most. You gotta keep everything clean. Okay, so the way we wanna start out here, this is color coded. I'm gonna use one, one side of this for half the roof. Then I'm gonna flip it over, use the other side for the other half. That way, any dirt I remove onto this side, I'm not gonna be rubbing over the other side of the roof. So we'll just start out like this. And I'll carry this over to the roof. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna start in the center. And now this is the technique I'm sharing. Okay, this thing is just freshly polished. So if this car was dirty, you don't gotta scrub the paint to get to break the hold of the dirt. It's gonna come off easy. So what most people do is they do this, they scrub, they make circles. But when you got a pristine finish, you start in the middle of the panel, make a pass, overlap, make a pass, overlap, make a pass, overlap, one more pass, boom, you're done. You don't need to keep rubbing that mitt over that paint to break the, the dirt on there to, to break its bond so you can rinse it off. Now I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna walk over to the other side. Remember I started out with the blue side. So now I'm gonna start out with the gold side because there's nothing on here. Again, put it in the middle, make one pass, overlap. Make another pass, overlap, make another pass, finish out. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, because glass is hard, if there was any dirt on here, I'm not too concerned about it scratching the glass. I mean, nobody ever changes mist to wash their glass anyway. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit the glass all around the whole car. And then I will take and rinse everything off that I've washed so far. And then we'll start on the hood. Notice I didn't get the cell panels. I will use a dedicated mitt for the cell panel. Okay, then here's the big, the big technique. We are now done with this wash mitt. There's, there's some loose dirt that's gonna be on here and it goes in 
to the clean bucket. From there, it's gonna go to the washing machine, then the dryer, then I'm gonna put it on a clean table. I'm gonna inspect it, my eyes, tactically my hands, and a pair of tweezers. Okay, so now we're gonna rinse. And here's where I like the shower setting. And the goal here, of course, is I've already polished the pan on this car one time. I just simply don't want to do it again. So this is really going to put this technique that I'm sharing with you to the test because we're going to pull it back in and inspect it with a swirl finder light. And there better not be any swirls or scratches in here because then I can just go home. <laughs> Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wash the next major panel. You always start at the top when you're washing the car and work from the top down. Oh, the exception is, is I always wash wheels and tires first, but I've already washed and uh, polished these uh, full wheel caps out and dressed the tires. So there's no reason for this video to show that kind of stuff. Okay, so here we go. Fresh wash mitt, again, color-coded, two different colors. Dunk it in here, grab some suds, and I'm gonna use the same technique. So I'm gonna start here in the middle. I'm just gonna make a pass, overlap, make a pass, overlap, make a pass, work from the center in. You always wanna work from the center in, not from the outside in. It's just a good best practice to have. I'll hit this mirror just a little bit. I'm gonna come down here. These Avantes have this really unique front end because there's no grill. Um, they are a liquid cooled car. I'm not sure where they put the radiator. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip this. I used the blue side on the passenger side. So now I'm gonna flip over to the gold side. I'm just gonna repeat that process, start in the middle, work my way out. I'm not scrubbing the paint. I'm not making circles. All I wanna do is just agitate the surface enough that the dirt that's on there would flush off, it'll rinse off. And this mitt, we're done. Back into the bucket, shower setting. Another thing that's nice about the Dr. Beasley's wash, car wash is, it's what's called free rinsing. Okay, well, what does free rinsing mean? What that means is the soap isn't gonna be all slimy. Like if you ever felt some car wash soaps, they're very slimy and they, they stick to your hand, but they also stick to the paint. It's like you gotta rinse forever to try to get them off. This soap is free rinsing, so it rinses off very clean. Doesn't leave any soap streaks behind because it completely rinses off. Okay, so now we're back over here. Another fresh wash mitt, clean. I inspect everything in my arsenal as it comes out of the wash machine. Now we're gonna come back and get the, the other major horizontal panel, and that's the trunk. Now this has a fairly small trunk, so I can knock out this easily. And I'm gonna come across over here, and I'm gonna go ahead, since I haven't hit that cell panel yet, I'll flip over, unused side, Get this beautiful cell, cell panel here. I gotta go hit the other side. And there we go. Again, the whole idea being not to take any dirt removed off one panel and then rub it over another panel. We are now, oh, let me hit the very back of this, very shallow here, the very, low profile and I'll go ahead and hit the bumper again. Chrome is a lot more resilient than paint. So if there were any light dirt on this mitt, then I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Okay, this mitt is now done. This is, I think, mitt number three. There we go, into the bucket. Okay, so we're gonna rinse. And then I'm gonna show you the, you know, this, this method is supposed to be the most OCD method. The way to be the most careful to wash the car so you don't put a scratch in. Now, this is true for this black car, but say you just paid or you just detailed your car yourself and now you've got a ceramic coating. But you know, this would apply even if you had a car nouveau wax finish, you know? The idea being is once you get your car in a condition like this, to not put a swirl or scratch back into it. I gotta come over here and just grab that one side there. But back to my, what I was saying, is I'm gonna show you the most OCD method to wash in the car. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and keep this side wet here. Okay, so 
When you're washing the vertical panels, you always want to work from the top down because usually the lower panels are going to be the dirtiest since they're closest to the road. The spinning tires, in case it's raining or just dirty, is going to put a lot more dirt and crud onto the lower panels. So the idea being is you start up high and work your way down. But sometimes when you're washing your car, you kind of forget what you're doing. You might make a swipe and go all the way down and now your mitt's contaminated and then you start washing. So here's how you can avoid that. Wash the lower panels first, remove that dirt, then start at the top and work your way down. Let me show you how. Okay, we grab another fresh mitt and I'm just gonna show you how I do this. So there's the lower panel, the dirtiest part of the car. I'm also gonna get the fender lip, then just this lower portion of the car And that way, any dirt that's down there will be flushed off the car before I work on the major portion of the vertical panels there. Hit this fender lip, and then come back here. And this is usually one of the grimiest parts because both tires now have been flinging stuff up. Okay, I am done with this side. This side is still fresh, so now I'm gonna hit the other side. And that's kind of what's nice about a color-coded mitt. It makes it easier for you to remember which side you use. There's the lower rocker panel there. I'm gonna hit that fender lip. I'm gonna come down here and just, just the bottom part. Hit the fender lip. And then the very underneath of the bumper here. Okay, and this mitt is done. Now we'll rinse. When we get done washing this car completely, we'll give it a final rinse. And I'm gonna show you two ways to dry your car. Actually, three ways to dry your car. All of them, the goal again, is to not put any scratches into the paint. Okay, so any dirt that was down here has now been washed and flushed off. So when I go from here, I only need to go down to about here, and there's no risk that I could ever possibly get any dirt here, drag it back up to here, because I've already removed it. Okay. Okay, back to another clean, fresh wash mat. We'll go over here to the, hit the driver's side first. Okay. Gold side against the paint. And again, start at the top, work your way down. You only need to make a few passes. Remember, if your car is in excellent condition, freshly detailed, uh, whether you're using a Carnuba wax, synthetic paint sealant, or a ceramic coating, any dirt that's on there, you can break the bond real easily with just one pass of the wash mat. You don't wanna be doing this, it's no need. Now, if your car is neglected, say it just hasn't been detailed since you bought it, then of course, you're probably gonna have to scrub it because there's nothing on that paint making dirt want to not stick to it. Okay, I use the gold side. Now I'm just gonna repeat that over here. Only now I'm gonna use the blue side. Okay, then again, just one or two passes. I always like to get into the little cutouts there for the door handles myself. There we go. And that mitt, we're done. Okay, so while I'm rinsing here, let me just talk about something that some of you are probably wondering. In the past, I've shown this process using the multiple towel methods. So it's the same idea. Instead of using wash mitts, you dunk all your towels into the soapy water mix. You come up, you make one pass with one side, then you flip to the other side. So you're never cross contaminating by using multiple towels. So the multiple towel method does work. It's also cheaper. Obviously, microfiber towels cost a lot less than multiple wash mitts. But the way I'd have you think about this is like this. If you've detailed your car on your own, you spent hours getting it to this condition. 
if you paid somebody to do it for you. Either way, you've got a lot of time and money invested in that finish. So buying, I think I'll end up using like seven or eight wash mitts. Those wash mitts are right around, I think 10 bucks a piece, maybe less. Say they're 10 bucks, say I use eight wash mitts, that's 80 bucks. It's in the big picture of things, it's not that much money. And then the good news is, if you do like I'm showing here, you here, you take and you keep them clean, keep them from becoming uncontaminated, you can use them over and over again. Okay, so I've washed the entire car, and at this point, I just wanna give it a final rinse. And it's always just a good practice uh, after you've washed the car to go ahead and give it a final rinse. You know, just to ensure anything, any dirt that you've loosened, you, you flush off the car. Here's where I like to use the jet setting, by the way. So this is called a fresh air grill. We've got a, a, a wiper, a windshield washer squirter here. We got a body seam here. So here's the hood, here's the fender, there's a seam there. So what I like to do with the jet setting, is just take and make sure I flushed everything out of these areas. So when I moved over this with the wash bin, I might have loosened some stuff. Now they've kind of fallen down on these little voids. So I use the I use the jet setting to make sure I've completely flushed those out. Then switch back over to the shower setting for the final rinse. And uh, I wash a lot of cars. I'm pretty OCD. You know, to be honest, most of the car washing I do is prep wash where I'm getting a car ready to detail. And I would never use this method uh, for a prep wash. I'd just use one wash mitt because I'm going to come back and buff out the car. So this is actually what's technically called a maintenance wash. Okay, now that the car is pristine, or perhaps you bought a brand new car, the paint should be pristine from the factory. We all know that's usually not the case. Dealerships tend to be kind of hard on the paint on new cars. There's completely rinse. But this would be called a maintenance wash. And then anytime that you're getting a car ready to detail, that would be called a prep wash. Also, just real quickly, since I kind of touched on it, let me talk about the two bucket method. Now, the two bucket method is where you have a bucket with clean rinse water and soapy water. The idea being is you would grab some soapy water, wash a panel, and then before you dunk this back into the soapy water to grab more soapy water, you'd rinse it off in the clean water bucket. And the idea being is you'd remove any loose dirt. I like this method because I don't have to worry about removing it. I'm already done with the mitt. I'm going to a fresh mitt. But when you use this method, you no longer need to use the two bucket method. There's no sense in rinsing a mitt off that you've just used on a panel if you're already going to be putting it in your dirty wash mitt bucket. Make sense? <laughs> okay, now let's dry this thing off. Now there's two ways to dry this off. My favorite way is actually a microfiber, a high quality microfiber drying towel. This is the gauntlet from the rag company and this is their 20 by 30 size. So it's not too big that it's unmanageable or it might drag against the ground if I get it close down there. So it's a very manageable size, but also will hold plenty of water. So let me show you how to do this and I'll show you the leaf blower technique next. Okay, as you can see, I've got standing water up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna lay this thing down. This is called the blotting method. Okay, so the idea being is I'm never drawing the towel or wiping the towel over the paint because that could put a scratch in. It ain't gonna do it because this is brand new and it's clean. But then you lift this up and you've removed all the water without actually having to rub or wipe this over it. The other way would be just to lay this thing down and then go ahead and just slowly drag it over the surface. Okay, it's called the least evasive, not invasive, evasive. It's very gentle to the paint. And that's how I would dry using a microfiber drying towel. Then of course, continue down the car. Let me grab my leaf blower and I'll show you the way to use a leaf blower. Okay. This is the Ego 650 CFM leaf blower. They actually got a more powerful one out nowadays, but when I bought this, it was the first one out, very powerful. Besides the trigger right here, <laughs> You've got the turbo button up here. Listen to the difference. And that, that's got some power to move water. Now, I love using leaf blowers to dry off cars, especially to blow water out of all the cracks and crevices, the, all the nooks and crannies around the mirrors, the door handles, the lights. I mean, it just blasts everything so you don't have water dripping down later on that just drives us all up the wall. But here's, how, here's how you do this. Yeah. <laughs> 
and then obviously keep moving around the car. Um, the only thing I'd say about this is I know a lot of guys like to get the stubbies. I gotta tell you, I've never figured out why. I like the original tube that's long because it gives me some reach. I got plenty of reach with it. Down here doing the wheels and tires. With the stubby, I'd be down here like this. So, hey, if you want the stubby, get it. I just find it's easier to not use it. But one thing I wanted to comment about, a leaf blower, is a lot of times if you come down here, you can capture that it gets the majority of the water off, but you see these tiny, tiny little water drops. And you don't want those dry in there. So even if I use a leaf blower, I always want to come back with my clean microfiber dry towel and just, again, start in the middle, work your way out. Just make one or two passes and remove all those tiny little water marks. Okay, so that is how I would approach washing a black car with a flawless finish, a ceramic coated car, any color, pink, or even a car with a fine carnauba wax. The idea being is once you get a car completely polished up and detailed and it's perfect and you're happy with it, how do you keep it that way? And you keep it that way by implementing simple techniques like using multiple wash mitts instead of one wash mitt, having a clean place to put your dirty wash mitts. When you're done washing, these go instantly to the washing machine, from the washing machine to the dryer. And then I clean a table. I clean it with the glass cleaner spray. I make sure it's clean. I put my clean laundry there. I inspect everything with my eyes, my sense of touch. I got two different types of tweezers handy to go ahead and pick anything out. If I can't pick it out, I dedicate that for cleaning oil up off the ground or some other purpose. But that's how you keep a pristine finish on a black car. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out all our other videos and of course our blog on the Dr. Beasley website.